Good day everyone, this is Gary Ander with your next issue of Highlights from CandleCharts.com. We often talk about combining candle patterns with Western technical or classic technical indicators such as moving averages or stochastics or Bollinger Bands or MACD. Today we're going to combine candle patterns with pivot points. And pivot points are a great tool, they're really for intraday trading. When I intraday trade or day trade with pivot points, I'm not making you know 10 or 20 trades a day. I might be making three or four or five trades a day. And combining the pivot points with the candlestick patterns gives you a great indication as to when you should place those trades. Today we're going to look at trading the cues. And here's the pivot point formula. We're really not going to go over that. Tons of information on that online if you if you want to research that, if you're not familiar with it. Some trading platforms such as Trade Navigator, as you see here, you can apply pivot point information right to the chart. It does it for you. It's very simple. So basically what we're doing is using a daily chart, the day's high, low, and close, to create pivot points for the following day. So these pivot points are created from this spinning top that we see here. And we're going to look on an intraday basis on this longer green candle. When I combine pivot points and candlestick patterns, I like to use a 15-minute chart works best for me. I know some people that like to use it off a five minute chart or a 10 minute chart. That's certainly personal preference, but today we'll take a look at what it looks like on a 15 minute chart. So here we are the entire day of that long green candle that we saw. And here we have the pivot point in the middle, the blue one. The red line is S1 or support one. The blue line, this first blue line, is R1 or resistance 1 and this upper blue line is resistance 2. Oftentimes when we come out of the box in the morning and we make a move like this above the pivot point especially remember that things have been very bullish so we're in an upward trending market right potentially we took a long trade when this moved above the pivot point you know whether we took this trade or not as this is starting to move up we first want to see what is going to happen when it gets to the first resistance point. And nothing happens here on this 15-minute chart. We go right through it. When we get right to R2, though, what happens? We have a small-bodied candle. We have a spinning top. Now, that's not a reversal pattern, but what that's telling us is that it lost momentum right at R2. like to see that. On this next candle... We are unable to make a new high, so potentially we took a short position right here. Also, if we had taken a long position when we had moved over the pivot point here, we could have sold that long position on this spinning top and maybe taken a short position somewhere in this area. We move down right at the pivot point and we see, what, a hammer, right? We've got small body, long lower shadow. So the short position that we put on here would be covered down here, maybe even after this uh, candle was complete. We also got long lower shadow, reasonably long lower shadow, long lower shadow. So this market's telling us that it really doesn't want to go down through the pivot point right now. And potentially we took a trade right here after the close of the hammer. Now that didn't go very far, it moved up a little bit. But hopefully, what I do on a situation like this, as soon as it starts moving up, I'll have a hard stop. I'll have a stop loss in here. So if it does come back at me, I'll get taken out. No big deal. So we move down. Stop loss got triggered, we'll say. And we move down towards S1. When we get down to S1, this is not a hammer. It's very close. It's giving us a similar indication with the long lower shadow. And then we do have a hammer. It's got a small upper shadow, small body, long lower shadow. It comes all the way down to S1. Potentially, we took a long position. If not, maybe on this next candle, as we pull back into the middle of the hammer, you know, we talk all the time about when a market's moving down like this and we see the hammer, oftentimes one of the next several candles would give us a retracement where we can put a position on somewhere in the middle of that hammer. So right in here, maybe we put the long position on, maybe we put it at the beginning of this next candle, no matter, we've got support at the S1, we've got a hammer. What do we have here when we combine these two candles? We have a bullish engulfing pattern. So this is really telling us that we've got a reversal in place at a support point. And from there, we move up, we go right through the pivot point, no issue there. When we get up to resistance one again, we move right through it. 
And then we basically go sideways riding on top of that first resistance line. And then we make a move up. Maybe you took your long profit here when we hit the R2 again. Or maybe you waited to the close of the day and it continued up a little bit higher. So potentially we had a long trade. We had a short trade. We had a long trade that didn't work out very well. And then we had another long trade that worked out really well. So you can see how profitable it could be combining your pivot points and your candlestick patterns. When you have a complete education in your candlestick patterns, the pivot points are really easy to incorporate into a plan so that if you want to do some intraday trading, you've got an excellent strategy to work with. Hopefully this helps with your trading. This is Gary Ender. Have a profitable day.